I decided to buy my daughter a car. It was going to be an amazing, extravagant gift, but then she did something that would ruin our relationship forever. I personally feel like religion can be a barrier to someone's progress in life. This statement is not coming from a place of hatred for religious folks because I'm not one. It's simply an honest opinion from my experience in life. I studied business management in a prestigious college right outside the country I live. And when I returned, there were various job offers waiting for me. I ended up in sales, sales guy, a really good one at that. I closed deals like it was nothing. It was easy to me. It was actually nothing. After a while, I decided to settle down and my parents recommended Gladys for me. They sang her praises and gave me an impression that getting married to her equaled winning a jackpot. It turned out they were not the only ones saying the same thing. The people in our community held her in high esteem. She was homely, never messed around with guys, and had a nice and hospitable personality about her. But most of all, they loved her because she was religious, and I mean way <laughs> religious. After listening to my parents and everyone command Gladys, I finally decided to ask her out, but it was a war. She rejected my advances as she claimed that she would not want to end up with someone like me, who was not in the whole religion at all. I normally would not waste time trying to woo some lady, but my parents insisted that I did all that I could do to marry her, and this made me start attending her place of worship, just so I could at least measure up in her sight. I can't help the laughter that comes each time I remember how I was made to engage in one religious activity or the other because of a woman, and to be honest, I hated the whole thing. My move soon paid off a few weeks later as she began courting me, and after three months, we were wedded. I immediately quit the whole religious activities once we finally tied the knot, and they'd serve their purpose. It turned out that my wife was actually the things which they had said she was. She was the real deal. I was happy with everything, even though I had in a sense tricked her into getting married to me. She did not retaliate in any way except in the area of work. She was just a stay-at-home wife. I bore the financial burden alone. Not that I would not necessarily bother me much if it was the only issue we had, my concern is in the fact that we've been married for five years now without children. Even though the doctors said that we were both okay, I suggested that we opted for an adoption or surrogacy, but my wife has just refused. Each time I bring up the suggestion, she would say that getting a child outside of natural means was against her religion, and she would call me a man of little faith. Well, since she had great faith in her religion, I wondered the reason why she's still childless. While she remained adamant in buying my ideas, we would soon celebrate our six-year anniversary in just a few months without a child. What's up, guys? Mr. Edito here. This story has multiple updates. It took 11 months, though, before the first update came out. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Let's go ahead and see what's happening with update number one 11 months later. Well... My wife and I recently welcomed our first child, a girl, though she's currently in the intensive care unit fighting for her life. The past months before my wife finally took in was a time in her life that I could say her religious attitude was at its peak. She did one form of a prayer or the other, and she would even compel me to join her, and I did join her initially, but it's not because I believed in any of the things which she did. I just wanted to please her and not disrupt the peace and I enjoyed in my home. I stopped after a while and you don't blame me though. Anyone in my shoes would do the same. I would sometimes try making my wife see reasons with me by telling her that one cannot keep on doing the same thing and end up with a different result. But she remained stubborn. In her religious practices, I even had to plead with her at some point that we can adopt a child while we still tried the natural means too, but she was not willing to, quote, betray her faith, and I just left her alone. If it were some other husbands who were desperate for children or who had little regard for their wives, they would get another lady pregnant and nobody would do a thing about it, but that was not mean. Though I was not religious, I had a form of morality. My wife's faith finally paid off when she got pregnant eight months ago, 
and though it was a win for both of us, she acted like she was the protagonist while I was the villain. She would not let me hear the end of it, and she would use every opportunity she had to give me a sermon on how it pays to be a persistent person and all. She just rubbed it in my face. Once word got out that she'd taken in her brethren from the church, took turns to individually pay us visits. They all said the same thing about holding on to the end. They used the opportunity to try to get me over to the religious side, but I'm not so easily moved. I would agree that my wife's journey to pregnancy was a really a story to tell, but I'm not alluding it to be the result of any religious activity whatsoever. She had been performing the religious activity for years, and it finally worked out now. Why did it not work then? The pregnancy seemed to strengthen my wife's resolves to hold strongly to her religion, even though she had faced complications with the pregnancy. We had gone for a scan, and it was revealed that she was pregnant with twins, a boy and a girl. We began making arrangements for the both of them until she began bleeding profusely one morning on the eighth month of her pregnancy. I rushed her to the hospital, and the doctor said that both her life and that of the babies were in grave danger. She needed to be operated upon immediately. Well, after a while, the doctors informed me that only two individuals would be saved, and so I had to choose. I ended up choosing my wife and our daughter. The operation was over after about five hours, and our daughter was born premature. She had to be placed in the incubator. My wife's church folk soon got the news that she was in the hospital and had battled for her life. They paid us a visit at the hospital and started with the whole religious shenanigans. I walked out on them. I knew that I was obviously going to get offended if I sat down there listening to their talk, because just a while ago, they had claimed that my wife's faith was the reason behind her getting pregnant. So was her faith now responsible for the complications which she had during childbirth? Was her faith now responsible for the death of our child and the other being born prematurely? I concluded that these guys were confused. If I had any inclination before then to tilt towards religion a bit, it certainly died off now. Somehow, if care's not taken, I'll soon confront these folks to stay away from my family. What's up guys, Mr. Redito here. So, this next update takes place a long time in the future. So let's go ahead and see what's happening 15 years later. Update number two. 15 years have gone by since my last post and her daughter's all grown up and in high school, but she's currently suspended for two weeks. It's just been one problem after the other. Unlike her mother, though, who religion may take the issue of morality a bit serious, our daughter's wild. She had no interest in religion, which her mother practiced, and though I don't have issues with someone who's not into religion, as I'm not religious either, I sometimes wonder if religion would have installed in our daughter just a bit of sense of morality. We had changed schools for her because of complaints here and there, but her attitude just remained the same. If it was not hanging with the wrong company, it was engaging in a fight or something else, I'd clearly warned her when we got this new school that this was going to be the last school we would be able to change her to. I made her understand that if she messed this opportunity up, then she could kiss her education goodbye. But my warning fell on deaf ears. I got a call one afternoon from her school principal to report the school. On getting to the principal's office, I found my daughter seated there. I just knew that she had done it again. The principal began rehearsing how my daughter had confronted a teacher who tried appealing to her to quit distracting the other students while lessons are being going on. My daughter was suspended for two weeks. We both got home that afternoon, and my wife knew that there was an issue occurring. An issue with our daughter probably instigated, and she was right. I tried talking to my daughter to learn her side of the story, but she put up a disrespectful attitude right away. She said that it is her life, and I should let her live how it she wanted. Here was someone who I was working my butt off the train. I quickly lost my temper as I had enough of her stupidity. I immediately gave her a dirty slap. Well, and if not the timely intervention of my wife, my daughter would have gotten a really good beating from me that day. How could she tell me to let her live her life the way she wanted in my own home? I feed her, I clothe her, I provide her shelter, and she had the guts to stand up to me. 
My wife did her best to hold me back from dealing with her daughter while my daughter ran out of the house. It was the first time that I was hitting my daughter ever. Neither her nor her mother had ever seen me that way. Well, our daughter was out at the house for hours, and while my wife was concerned about her whereabouts, I cared less. It was actually in her best interest to stay far from me at the point in time as I was still boiling with anger. My anger soon turned to fear when the police vehicle landed in front of my house. My wife and I were both shocked as to what was going on. I felt that they were probably mistaken our house for someone else, but the matter took a different turn when they demanded I follow them straight to the station. Well, she had reported a case of battery to the police. Now, this is America and parents are not allowed to hit their children. I'm well aware of that. But what in the world would prompt my daughter to report her own father to the cops? How did she even know that it was illegal to hit a child? She was apparently more exposed to information than I thought. <laughs> I was released on bail and the police made me sign an undertaking to never lay my hands on our daughter. How embarrassing. I was embarrassed and humiliated by my own 15-year-old daughter. Well, we all went home and my wife tried her best to settle the tension that was already existing between my daughter and me. All I did was attempt to correct the child that I was working really hard to train, but I got disgraced publicly for that. My wife proposed that we treated her softly with love so that she does not drift away. If the distance which I travel to cover a deal just so I could provide for my daughter's not enough to show of love, then I wonder what is. Well, at this point, I really don't care. She has spent three days out of the 14, which she ought to stay back, and so far... Her mother has been taking her to church and all just so she could be more religious and embrace morality. But I have no doubt that it's going to be a futile effort. Left to me, I would totally ignore her. What would you do if you were me and your 15-year-old daughter has caused you this much grief and pain? Update number three, three months later. Hey guys. It's been three months since my last update, and just like I predicted, my wife's means of going about the whole daughter transformation failed miserably. Well, it seemed to work at first. My daughter joined my wife from one activity to the next, and she even begun helping out with chores at home. My greatest surprise came one evening after I returned home from work. She came and apologized to me for the embarrassment and disgrace which she caused me. I readily forgave her, of course, which normal parents would bear grudge of their 15-year-old daughter for long. My wife and I were really grateful with the fact that my daughter was turning a new leaf, and at that point in time, I was beginning to see the whole religion thing as an effective tool for child transformation. My wife, as usual, gloated about it, and tried using it to get me to go to church, and, well, it worked for a while. Just a while. My daughter soon began taking religious activities more serious than my wife. She would leave the house hours before any activity at church was to begin and would stay back hours after it ended. Not even her mother, whom I've known to be religious, was that zealous. We were both proud of her. My wife was proud of the fact that she was both developing a sense of morality and taking religion very seriously. While I was glad that she was no longer giving us issues... I resumed paying her college fund, which I'd opened up for her since she was a toddler, but stopped the payment once she reported me to the police. Three weeks into this, her new found faith, my wife and I received a call from her pastor to come down to the church on one Saturday evening. I usually would not attend and my wife knew it, but she pleaded with me to not ignore her pastor, who had been a huge positive influence in the life of our daughter. Well, I agreed, and we both got to church where the pastor was waiting in the office, with our daughter and a boy standing by. The boy was apparently a member of the church, too. They both had their faces to the ground, and my wife screamed out in disgust as the pastor told us that he caught my daughter and the both having intercourse in the sanctuary. I had to hold myself from collapsing as I felt really dizzy. It turned out the morale facade which she had put up was just that. A facade. It was all a lie. She wasn't really having any zeal for religion, neither did she have any sense of morality. Who would have a sense of morality and still sleep with an individual right there in the church? In essence, there was really no such thing as religion between an effective tool for child upbringing, as my wife and her people had claimed. 
Our daughter, who was a virgin before being suspended, lost her virginity in the church while being reformed. <laughs> right now, the only thing I could call religion is ugh. It provides cover for individuals to indulge in immorality. All the time my daughter went hours ahead to a religious activity, and all the times when she stayed back long after it was over, she uses an engaging in practices of sex. I can't really remember most of the things which my wife's pastor said that day. I was too embarrassed and angry to listen. I stormed out of the office, leaving my wife and daughter behind though I'm angry. I'm somewhat pleased that my wife was equally there in the office that day to see for herself what religion had done to her daughter. That would make her see reason and the next line of action which I would take. Update number four, four months later. So it's been four months since my last update and my daughter's gradually turning into an online influencer. She makes content for ladies online. You're probably asking how she turned from a trouble creating child to a content creator who has an ever-growing fan base. Well, immediately after the saga of the church, I banned my wife and daughter from going there or relating with them. I threatened to throw both of them out of the house and they went against my orders it would happen. I could not beat my daughter, neither could I raise my hand on my wife, but I could send them out the house in less than a few days. Her church folks soon began visiting us to inquire why we suddenly became absent from the church, though they knew that it had something to do with my daughter losing her virginity there. I told them my mind and they tried in vain to make me change it. After all was said and done, their pastor finally visited us himself. He claimed he was on a mission to restore my daughter. I was not willing to have my daughter go through any form of restoration. It always ends in problems. My wife finally began losing color simply because I stopped her from associating with those religious folk. I even banned her from engaging in her religious activities in the house. I began looking for a job for her because I felt she would not have time to miss that religion nonsense if she actually had a job. Besides, it was high time she had one. Things began to go amiss in my relationship with my wife. She did her best to hide the fact that she was hurt, but it was showing... When we made love, she was mentally and emotionally absent. My daughter, on the other hand, had resumed school, but I took away her allowances. I began to soften with time, and I soon permitted my wife to rejoin her people if she wanted to. But my daughter was strictly off limits. My daughter was still not allowed and would never be allowed to rejoin them as there was every tendency she would run back to the boy who was a member of the church and still sought every opportunity to link up with her. My daughter remained calm for the next few weeks. There was no problem in school or at home, and my wife soon suggested that we got her a phone to get her mind occupied with other things that did not relate with her lover. I saw sense in this suggestion, and we soon got her a phone. Well, this is the era of social media, right? And soon she found herself on various social media platforms. She got on the... TikTok, and began creating girly content, makeup, and stuff. It started as a joke, but soon she began growing popular in and around school. She would make a video in less than 30 minutes. It would go viral. My wife and I were impressed. It could prove useful along the run. I mean, having a daughter this popular figure is something that every parent would love. I know I do. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. So there's two more updates that was written by OP. The next update did not come out for several months, and everybody just assumed it was over there. However, update 5 might have some things in it you did not see coming. If you're enjoying this saga story, guys, go ahead and click that subscribe button, and let's see what's going on with update number 5. Six long months have gone by, I'm sorry for the long update, but quickly, I'm currently jobless and heading home where I plan on dealing with my daughter in the best legal way possible. My daughter recently turned 17 years of age four months ago, and for the first time in years we celebrated her birthday even though things were beginning to get tough for us in every sense of the word. She posted certain video clips from the party on her TikTok page, and as usual she gathered some likes. A few days after the party celebration we started experiencing some real financial difficulties that only grew worse. Bills started piling up, and if there was any other person assisting and sharing the financial burden, then it wouldn't have been so bad. But my wife was far too religious to work, 
Besides, getting a job was somewhat difficult. I tried my best, but my sales began to depreciate. And for a salesman whose increase in profit depended on what he sold, it meant that I was a serious financial mess. It was around that time that my wife suggested we approach her people for financial assistance. I blatantly refused. I was not going to put myself in a position where I felt indebted to her people. Everyone in the home seemed to understand our financial dilemma, but it was just my wife and I that adapted. My daughter was still behaving like all was well. Maybe that was because her mother and I deprived ourselves of certain things just so that she could still be comfortable. She still lavished resources creating her content. I guess the celebrity lifestyle of lying to the world on camera was catching up with her, huh? It got so bad that she soon began demanding for a car to shoot her video. The request was really stupid, and that's the kind of way to say it. How can a 17-year-old child with a functioning brain make such an absurd demand at a time when there was bills to pay? Ugh. I, for one, had even sold mine just so we could clear up the rent and some other things. There was just no way, not even in her wildest dreams, that she could get a car anytime soon. My daughter approached me yesterday morning while I was on my way to work, and as you would expect, it was because of the car. I simply rehearsed my stance before her. I made her understand that there were two reasons why she could not own her own car at the age of 17. First of all, we needed money for other pressing needs. Money which was not available, and even if we had money in excess, we would still not be able to give her the car she so badly wanted as she was still a minor and the law considered her ineligible to drive. I was with my daughter when my boss called, asking that I got to the office as soon as possible. I left my daughter that morning and headed straight to work, as I was already running late. I got to work and was told that my boss had been looking for me everywhere, so I got to his office to find his wife seated with him. The whole scenario looked strange. It was the second time that his wife was coming to the office in all of seven years that I've been working for her husband. My boss informed me that his wife had been running a hair brand for a while. It was public knowledge, though, and she wanted to sign my daughter, who was becoming a popular figure, to the brand ambassador in a deal that was worth over $300,000. And since she was less than 18 years of age, the law states that her guardian, which happens to be me, will be the one to sign on her behalf. My boss wanted me to take the whole day to think about it and probably discuss it with my family, especially my daughter, so I could get her approval. There was nothing really to think about. My daughter's popularity was finally going to pay off. Or so I thought. I went home that day and overenjoyed, even though I had the information from my daughter. I knew that seeking her consent was of no use as she would gladly jump at the idea to represent a girly brand. I told my wife about it though and I asked her to keep it a secret from our daughter till the deal the day was signed and part of the money was paid. I was going to surprise my daughter with her own car while breaking the news to her. That night, my daughter still pleaded with me about getting a car, and I still turned her down. It was all part of the surprise plan. I never knew it would end up ruining things for me. My daughter left my room that night feeling angry and frustrated, and the only way she knew to take the anger out was to go to her social media. She created a video that night where she slandered her mother and me as irresponsible parents. She began pouring out our private matters to public and even went as far as bringing up the incident that happened a few years ago when I had hit her, and she got me arrested. She claimed that her mother and I both teamed up to really beat her unconscious as though we had not thrown her out of the house or laid a finger on her ever since because the police had issues and a strong warning to us. We deprived her of some privileges, and I left very early for the office this morning as I wanted to sign the deal on the behalf of my daughter. I got to the office and still find the same scenario as the previous day. My boss and his wife were seated, but there was a difference. They weren't smiling. They informed me that the deal would no longer be taking place, and I was confused why. They brought out the video which my daughter had uploaded last night and showed to me, and I almost died. 
My boss's wife told me that the video had generated a mixed reaction from the public, with most of them calling for the head of my wife and I. They further told me that if my daughter had some other guardian or if she was of legal age, then they would have worked with her and not with me as the public would not respond positively to that. I tried explaining to the wife of my boss that there's just a mix-up somewhere, but she was not willing to listen. After I'd spent some minutes pleading with her, it dawned on me that her mind was made up and there was no turning back. I was about to leave the office when my boss called me back in and handed over my sack letter to me. That's right, I was fired. I got lost. Yeah. I got lost, all right. I lost everything in an instant. I just left the bar where I'd spent some hours, and I'm currently headed where, I don't know, home, and plan on dealing with my daughter in the best way possible that does not involve beating her. Huh, of course. Mr. Edito here, so that was a crazy turn of events. It went from $300,000 to nothing to abuse and back to getting fired. Guys, update 6 is coming up. It's the final update of this saga. I hope you enjoyed it so far. Here it is. It's been three months since my last update, and this would probably be my final one, as my daughter's currently getting what she deserved. I got home that day, and my wife, who was probably expecting me to be all smiles, saw me drunk. I told her that our ticket out of hardship had just been wrecked by our daughter. She was devastated, and that was the first time I would see my wife get angry. She confronted our daughter, who attested to posting a video that previous night out of anger. Neither my wife nor I knew what to do. My wife told our daughter what we had going on and we had planned to do for her, all of which were no longer going to take place because of her actions. So, I grounded my daughter and I took her phone from her for life. The very phone which she used to cost me my job, we were even. Huh. I'd lost my job and her life as a content maker was gone. And she'd lost deals that was worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. After about a week, I was absolutely broke. There was literally no money anywhere and the bills were still rising. I suddenly remembered the college trust fund which I opened for my daughter. Well, I withdrew that money without hesitation. She could kiss her college goodbye. I lifted the ban from my daughter and a month later she was forced to go and learn all skills as there was rarely any food at home. The moment the ban was lifted and my daughter laid her hands on her phone again, she created another video in order to debunk the first. More like a damage control technique. Well, this time around. Um, the reaction of the masses was negative towards her. They obviously felt manipulated by her and could not trust her anymore and that she was somehow equally lost to the fan base that she gradually built over these years. Every member of my household is now looking for how to generate income. My daughter's currently learning hairdressing while my wife just got a job in a bookstore. It's funny because she has little time for her religious activities as most of her time spent at her job, which doesn't really pay much. I, on the other hand, I got a call three days ago from a textile company. They want me to help market their product. The pay's great and, uh, guys, I'm gonna take it. Okay, guys, so this story was a lot to take in. I would like to know what you would have done if you were in OP's position. Not being religious, being surrounded by your wife who's religious, and having your daughter absolutely torment your life. Guys, please let me know how you would handle this, or if you've ever been in a similar situation, drop your story down below. Guys, if you don't know who I am, my name's Mr. Redito, and I read stories every single day. If that's something you enjoyed and you like today's content, consider subscribing to the channel. I hope you do, and I hope I see you tomorrow. Have an amazing day, and remember one thing, guys. It's cool to be kind.